I remember one of the, somebody asked, asked me a question on um, on, on Instagram, like, did they popped up? Went, can I ask you a question? I was like, oh god, go on, what's this one going to be? Went, why did he call you Journeyman? And I was, I was a bit stumped by it because I'm like, well, I didn't know. I said, I, I was just thought it was because like, we, we travel up and down the country where I was on a journey. And this guy went, he goes, I've always thought it's because like, you're helping like prospects on their journey. And I went, do you know what? I said, I've never even thought of it like that. I thought it was just that simple because like, we were on a journey this week, that week. So. Every stop at ABC, like my, my uncle Steve was a British champion when he uh, as, as, as schoolboys when he was younger. He had a punch bag in his room, which is actually my room now. So he used to always play on that. And um, one of my mates, Lee Wilson, I think he was 10, I was nine, and he was saying like he's, he's going boxing. I was like, I can I come with you? And um, a, a few, me and Wilson started at first, and then a, a lot of the lads on the estate all got into it. Like Scott started with us now, who we're going to be training later. Um, but yeah, um, all, all them just just uh, stopped it. I stuck stuck to it. Like up, up until I was about 16 and then like just taste, got a bit of a taste of the party life and then I was always like back and forth from boxing you know but like I say make, making a living out of it now it's all, all I ever wanted to do really. Making his ring walk now from Stockport, the devil child, Jamie Quinn. I never had it easy as my amateur career. Like, all the best in Britain was always in my weight division, but I was always busy. But like I say, like, amateur was just a learning curve. Rog, I think my first fight um, it was against like Reese Roberts. He'd been in the school boys and everything, and I got stopped in the second round. That's the only time I ever got stopped as an amateur. So how does it work then for people that don't understand it? Like they look at your record and they think, right, this fella's clearly no good. If you watch you, and obviously you've got a lot of fans within the boxing community, you know, people that have boxed at serious levels that watch you and say, you can see how skilled he is, you can see how good he is, and you can see he's, he's fighting for money. But, but boxing's a business, not a sport. I, I, I didn't think it was like this when I turned pro, but it, it is, I don't make the rules. So basically how it is, uh, the, the, whole, the home fighter, he has to sell, say, 1,100 quid's worth of tickets just to pay for his opponent, which is someone like me. And if, um, so that's that's uh, like a thousand pound for the opponent's wages, a hundred pound for his uh, for his travel expenses, and whatever his promoters take him. Say his promoter say it's 200 quid off him, he's got to sell another 200 quid's worth of tickets to pay for his promoter. And whatever ticket money he's got left, that's his money. So a lot of the time that some of these prospects are fighting for nothing. I would say some are lucky. Some have got like all sponsors and everything. They come out with the shorts on, they look like race car drivers, but whereas like the opponent was me, it was somebody like I, I always struggled to sell tickets, me, and it was too stressful, like and everyone letting me letting me down, like the people saying they were gonna come to me fighting and then, uh, I, was, I, was, I was ring them up past for the tickets. Got to the point where my old mates were, were uh, avoiding my phone call because they knew I was my room for a ticket and I but whereas I'll come along and after my fight I get an envelope I, 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 recently recently it's been going in the banks but they used to just give you an envelope full of cash and then you, you get a wage slip with it and that's it. Cash and dash we used to call it. I, I, just, I just knew from the fight that I, ne I never was, I, I knew I was never going to be world champion or anything like I say I, I, I never even got to, I always got to like the pre-quarter finals like up there in the amateur cont uh, competitions but I never really won it so uh, if you can't do it in the amateurs you're not going to do it in the pro but well, so my dream always was when I think I thought, imagine if one day I could make a living out of boxing. That's what I'm doing now. The people that criticise boxers, they're, they're at work now, working all day in this weather. And look at me. You've got to be skilled to do what you do, though. that's the main thing, isn't it? I mean, people have got to understand that you, you can't yeah, be yeah, a yeah, good you, away you, fighter. Yeah, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be a good journeyman without being a good boxer. Like, you could, you could probably be a good punch bag, have an hard head. People don't realise like, how much like, goes into it. And then it, it's not just that, like, just the, these prospects are always full of tricks. You're going to come against a different person every time. And that's the main thing. You get some people, they think, right, my, my style will suit his style, I'll be all right. But the thing is, when you're doing what I'm doing, we're out every week. Like, you're going to come across all kinds of different styles, so you've got to literally be ready for every style, style that comes at you. So when do you decide, or what, what's this, the thinking, that you want the phone to ring all the time, which means that you've got to go in there, teach the prospect a few lessons? Early on in my career, my first year as a pro, and I never used to do this, like this uh, 
go to lose things, go to, go to cover up and move. I used to always go and have a go, but I, 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 there's, there's a few, and I'm not going to say no names because it's disrespectful, but there's a few I think I definitely won, won that fight and they did not give it us. And then it's ended up, um, the, the, the phone stopped ringing, I've had fights lined up after that, and then they've, they've, they've pulled out and got someone else. And I, that, that's where I started to realise the game, like, what bit, how bent it was, but like, to, say, to go in there and have a fight is hard work, it's tiring, and every time I let my hands go, and leave, I leave my head open, so I'm putting myself at risk. And I, I, what people don't realise, if, if I get stopped, or if I get one cut on my face, then I can't fight for another, for another 28, to 40, well, 28 days. And if I get knocked out, then it's 48 days. So, like, and if I've got fights lined up, like, why, why take the risk? But you seem to enjoy it in there. I mean, you have some fun. You were saying before about the crowds. We've seen at the Fight Zone Arena as well. You're in there, and at the minute you get some jip, you're the, sticking your tongue out, having the crap with, with, with all the punters. I mean, you genuinely seem to be enjoying it in there. Yeah, I, I, I do. That's I, mean, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it, but uh, every, every time I'm, I'm out, out boxing and coming on these things, I'm always learning stuff like, I know I've had 121 fights now, but I'm still learning every day. And everything I'm learning, I can put, pass down to my clients. Do you, do you get enough respect? With people that maybe with the, the boxing fans do you think you get enough respect from oh, them oh yeah definitely like, like i say um i'm uh, in this from my own thing I, I couldn't really couldn't really care what people think about me outside the ring like the, the only people that ever disrespect us are the people like them couch potatoes that have never been in a ring the life like oh i would have done this i would have done that but every, anyone who knows anything about boxing like knows how hard it is and like you do get a lot of good respect for them Except you didn't get such respect from the uh, the tabloid. From, from the, the sun. The, oh, no. What was that? The worst two boxes in Britain are meeting or something oh, like no, that. Oh yeah, that was horrible. That honest God, it was the uh, single most embarrassing day of my life. That and I, I'm not on Twitter, but apparently you got a lot of stick. Apparently, like loads of people were sending him a, a, a lot of stick on the internet, like the the, the journalist. But he, he messaged me. He said, "I know know how the journeyman work and everything." I'm thinking, well, clearly you don't. Yeah, and then it is, um, he goes, if you look now, you'll notice we've changed it to two of uh, UK's uh, best journeyman boxers. But I thought it was a bit late now. It's already been out for two days. Like, I'm already branded with it. And I honestly got a thought, next time I come out, I'm going to be like, Ugh, I thought, as soon as Romley's finest get hold of me. But now, to be honest, like, I actually bounced back the other end out of that one because like, I, I, got, I got nothing but good respect for it. Like, obviously, some of the lads had a bit of a laugh, like a bit of banter, but you, I can take that. It's all water under the bridge now. Jeremy, so we're at the gym now. This is Matthew Hatton, the gym that he uses as well. So Campbell yeah. Hatton, pros train here. But obviously I know it's an amateur, you know, there's the yeah, kids yeah. coming here as well. Oh, there's loads of work as well in the community. But this is where you do your PTs then mainly. Yeah. It oh, is spin of the devil. Uh, hello, hello. How are we doing? You okay? I'm sorry, I think. I'm good, mate. Just, uh, just doing this with Quinny. Yeah, Bob. I didn't realise he was doing the PTs here. But anyway, so you do all your PTs here? And yeah, I've been here 12 weeks now. I messaged Matt a bit ago asking if he had any work in his gym. And then as soon as he opened, I, uh, he, he gave us the message, come down. I said, yeah, I've been here since. I'm it's loving perfect it. Here, isn't it. Yeah, it's perfect. So not too far. And the man himself yeah. as well. No oh, lie. Well, we see him, Matt. That's not bad, is it? Exactly. Quinny's box at such a good level. You know, when you look at his record, um, he's been in with a who's who, you know, around the probably featherweight to lightweight, only been stopped a, a handful of times, which is absolutely amazing. It shows what a tough guy he is. But like you touched on there, they're just so important to the sport. I think Quinny's had about five fights in the last six or seven weeks. You know, you speak to, uh, to, to someone who doesn't really know the game, they, they, they'd be amazed by that. Um, but no, um, like you say, it's uh, the, the, the journeyman, uh, so important for the young fighters. And without a doubt, Quinn is one of the best of them about now. He's a legend, isn't he? Legend of the game. He's, he's born for this one, he? He's born for it. I hope I, can be as, I can, hope I can be respected as much as him one day, you know, which one of them. That's got to be your goal as a journeyman, to set it to like someone like him, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. He's got an easy life on it. He's got no kids, that's why it's easy for him. Yeah, I've got two kids, mum, that's why I'm, I'm, not, I'm surprised I'm not bald. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>